afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're watching us from. Welcome to The Leader, courtesy of the Evangelical Alliance of Kenya. It's all about leadership. And today, please tell a friend to tell a friend to tune in. And let's get interactive on the social media pages. You're watching us on YouTube. Please share your chat. Today, we have someone who calls himself a youth. <laughs> uh, but when you look at the two of us, clearly, he's the younger one of the two of us. So at least for that end, we can tick that box. When I got the basic credentials of this young man, founder and team leader, Orak Branding, founder, Moranga Youth Assembly, board member, Kepsa Youth Subsector Board, consultant, Women in Business Kenya, youth leader, KKREW will tell us, or I think it is K Crew Kubamba. Yes. Where do you get time to do everything? But let's start. Please, who are you? Start, let's start by you telling us, give us your name and who you are. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Uh, it is an honor to represent the youth on, on this show. My name is Monene Guevara. I'm the co-founder of Orac Branding, which is an integrated branding company that launches, grows, and reinvents businesses through digital, experiential, and promotional branding. Hey, that's a paragraph. Okay, let's continue. And then uh, <laughs> I'm the founder of the Moranga Youth Assembly, which is a movement for transformative and accountable governance. So we basically want to push the government to deliver, especially the government from where I come from, Muranga County. And then uh, through business, I've been able to sit in the Women in Business Kenya Secretariat, where I advise on branding and business development. And then as well, uh, I also sit on the KEPSA Youth Subsector Board on ICT. Uh, which we report to CS Joe Mosheru. Wow. And there is so much more you have not told us. Yes. But uh, just to let our viewers uh, know, we all know 2022 in Kenya, I think as far back as three years ago, mm -hmm. we're looking forward to it, looking forward to it, counting down. It is here with us. And the youth are saying, in 2022, let no one despise our youth. Mm -hmm. Now, are you a youth or are you a young man? And when you stop being a youth? So yes, I am a youth. And uh, as per the Kenya standards, I'll stop being a youth when I hit 35. <laughs> so past 35, I'll stop, being, stop calling myself a youth. So I have... Uh, I think six more years. Ah, now we know your age. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I am a youth. Yes. And I'm very passionate mm -hmm. about good governance. Mm -hmm. I'm passionate about um, the micro, small, and medium enterprises as well. So, 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 this year we are having elections. Countdown is really on yes. in a couple of months. Yes. Okay. In August. But the world will not stop, God willing. Mm -hmm. Life will go on. Yes. Now, the youth, are you at the table or are you on the menu? I can say we are not fully on the table. We, we have an assumed table. <laughs> Virtual. See, or digital. <laughs> That's where you are. <laughs> uh, we, we, we have a, an assumed table, which is not the right thing that should mm. be happening. Mm -hmm. We should be on the table. Uh, we should be participating uh, on these uh, on these agendas, the things that are happening in this country, uh, making decisions, implementing these decisions. Mm -hmm. So I can say we are not at the table. We are the ones maybe doing the quote unquote simple jobs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Tokenism. Tokenism. <laughs> now, clearly. The youth are the majority in this country. Yes. You have the numbers. In democracy, we say 
the majority have their way, the minority have their say. Yeah. Why aren't the youth on the driver's seat? I'd say it's because of uh, the system. Mm -hmm. And uh, because the system is controlled by one, the old guard, <laughs> uh, the old money, like yes. we call it. Mm -hmm. And then now it's, it's very hard for us, they used to drive our agenda one and the agenda of the nation that we think would work well for this nation. So if we uh, are not uh, being invited to this table, then it means that uh, it is very hard for us to drive our agenda as the youth. But let me, I might have a challenge there. Mm -hmm. Leadership, responsibility, and similar, nobody will give you, you take it. If you were to be given, you will stop being a youth. But let's, let's, let's dig deeper into who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, growing up, you know, just a bit of background, yourself, your family, the challenges, observance. Where did this spark of leadership, you know, uh, when did that bug bite you? So let, let, let's talk about you for a couple of minutes. Let's dig. So oh, were you the one in class who would write uh, all the noisemakers? Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> teacher, teacher, this man, this boy, this guy. So that set you apart from the rest. Let's, let's dig deeper. So um, I grew up in, I uh, was born in Pumwani. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Isili. Mm -hmm. So I grew up here in Nairobi. And uh, I'm a firstborn in a family of three boys. Mm -hmm. So my mom is the only lady, lady in yeah. the family. Yes. Um, so she has a lot of male energy in the house. And growing up, I was, uh, I can say, in primary, I was very, uh, I really loved to, to read. I really loved education. I was a bright student, I can say. But now, going to high school, I think the teenage bug beat me, and I became very rebellious. Mm -hmm. And of course, being rebellious, you'll always have your followers. <laughs> you know, there are people who are influenced by your rebellion. So, and at that time, I didn't know that was leadership, but negative leadership. So I went on, cleared high school, went on to college, and then at some point, I gave my life to, to Christ. And then now, that is when I discovered that uh, whatever... I was doing in high school, in college, that was leadership. You know, you, you can influence people to go into a particular direction, to believe in a certain vision, despite whether it's negative or positive. So that is where uh, I'd say my foundation for leadership started. And then I joined uh, K. Krukubamba. And then I, I was really, I'm always disturbed by when I'm in a space and things are not going right. I'm always disturbed by that. You know, systems that are not working, uh, things that are not uh, doing okay, leaders who are not accountable. And I remember I used to be in a group and I used to tell myself, if one day <laughs> I am the leader of this group, I will change the A to Z of this, of this group. You'll disrupt it. I'll disrupt it. Uh -huh. And then I think God had the prayer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I remember we, we had a gap in leadership. And then I decided just to step in mm -hmm. and be the leader. And then after stepping in for a few months, I was confirmed as the leader. And then that's when the real disruption happened, when I had the full authority. So that is when uh, that mandate to be a leader really was was formed and then now from there i asked myself if i've been able to transform a group you know transform a fellowship of around 200 people why can't i uh, challenge myself to move to my county and uh, start transforming them little by little Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, what, 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 uh, you mentioned a couple of things, mm -hmm. and uh, one of them is uh, K. Kruk Bamba. Yeah. What, what is it? What, what, 
Kekru Kubamba is a Jesus movement mm -hmm. where young people come to fellowship, to do life together. And so it is a huge movement. So we have smaller groups which have around 200 people. So one of the smaller groups is um, uh, I was privileged to be, to be the leader, but now I've transitioned. So that is where young people come to, we say it's a, it's a fertile ground for young people to come and realize their potential, whatever potential that is, whether it's business, leadership, talent. Mm -hmm. So that is Kekru Kubamba. And uh, something interesting that you just said there is that you transitioned. Yes. But you're still a youth. I mean, what I'm encouraged, if I get it right, is that um, you are in a place position for a season. So don't last forever. Yes. <laughs> Allow others to also come in. You become, you know, a pipeline to encourage uh, others. Uh, is, is that, do we share the same view? Yes. So the thing about good governance, one aspect of good governance, and I think this is something African and uh, Kenyan leaders should learn, is knowing when to exit the stage. Uh, that is something we struggle with. We, we, but you see our politicians keep telling us, my people, my people want me. <laughs> they will tell me. <laughs> but your, your, your people can be, you can represent your people in other ways mm -hmm. by raising other leaders. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be the de facto leader <laughs> that you will, you will die on the seat. Mm -hmm. And you see that, that is usually the fear mm -hmm. of, of uh, African people that uh, if we elect such a person, they will, quote, unquote, die on the seat. And when they die on the seat, the brother or the wife... It steps in to finish what uh, yes. you didn't finish, like yes. as if you, you are here to finish. <laughs> yes. I mean, you are here to do a bit and move on. Others will continue. <laughs> so when, when, I, when I stepped into, into the leadership, I told myself, I'll be excellent for three years. Mm -hmm. I'll apply myself 100% for three years. Mm -hmm. And on the third year, I will have a system and a structure to raise other leaders for now the, that whole year. So that now, uh, at the end of that year, I'm able to smoothly transition, uh, one, bring in new leaders, and for, me to, uh, and, and for it to allow me to move into other things from good to great. Now, if that was your big one legacy. Yes. <laughs> See, we're all about legacy. What you'd be remembered for. Mm -hmm. um, what challenge did you have? How did you identify or encourage leadership that is inclusive, representative? Because mm -hmm. others may be leaders, but they may not, or they may have the potential in them, mm -hmm. uh, but they are generally introverted, they don't step out. How did you help identify or encourage or nurture? So you, you help yourself by practicing, you know, practicing leadership and uh, exposing yourself. Exposure is very key mm -hmm. for you to identify your courage and also to be organized. When you're organized, you allow yourself to. Uh, when you're organized, when you're prepared, when you're always planning, uh, thinking about what to do next, you give yourself a lot of courage. And then now the exposure, and then now taking action. Action is very key. Because if you take action today, it means you lose some form of fear. And it means that you learn. It means that you have continuous improvement to do, which will always take you a step further. Mm -hmm. And people will always uh, notice that. And more exposure will come as a result of that. So you keep on building your courage. Yeah. Now, um, but let's, I'm sure it was not easy. It was yes. not necessarily smooth. Yes. Uh, I'm asking for a friend now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and incidentally, you out there who are watching and listening, you can also ask for a friend or ask for yourself. We have a WhatsApp number that is 0758 058261. 0758 058 
0.261. You're out of the country, plus 254 without the zero. Now, asking for a friend. Mm -hmm. Do you recall even one incident that you would say in that space and time, not necessarily specific to, uh, you know, that uh, organization, mm -hmm. that you'd say really challenged or tested your leadership and felt, you know what, I can do other things. I don't have to do this. Yes. Please, if you don't mind sharing. And uh, I normally say, that when you want to transform an organization or a country or a ward, mm -hmm. the A to Z of that organization is very important. There's no stone you should leave unturned from A to Z. Look at A, how should it change? Uh, how, should, how should it be disrupted? So we had so many challenges. One was the status quo. There are people who felt that, uh, <laughs> Who's your mother? Who's your mother? We have been doing things in a particular way. Who mm. do you think you are? Yes. You know, you're young. If you ain't broke, don't fix it. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you fix things, to touch a kukua close in the leadership. Mm hmm you know, if you fix things to touch uh, some benefits, mm -hmm. our voice, it So there was that status quo. And uh, that was a very big challenge. But you have to be very firm with such a, such a status quo. You have to tell yourself that uh, I'm not here to please anybody. I'm here to transform positively and generationally the lives of people. And in this case, young people. Because if we do not change their lives, then the leadership becomes useless. I remember I told my co-leader, if seven months from now we have not transformed the lives of people, Afadali Tunde Mombasa, Tucheze na Maji, Kuliko Tucheze na Maisha ya Watu. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the status quo, I have to say, is one of the one of the biggest challenges, and then accountability. So there are people who don't want to be accountable to, to the things they are doing, to the lives of people. So those two elements, um, the status quo who, who don't want transformation, mm. and, uh, and leaders who are there and don't want to be accountable. But you have to deal with such people or such cases head on. Whether you're a leader, whether you're a, a youth leader, or uh, you're an ad advanced in age as a leader, you have to be very firm on transformation and accountability. Now, you've mentioned one or two things there that are pretty interesting. And, and by the way, this cuts across, not necessarily just in the political uh, sphere. Yes. Um, and I imagine then, to be effective, you need to put in systems and structures. Yes. But you also cannot, you can't do it alone. You know? Definitely. You will not succeed. Uh, or if you think you're succeeding, you just realize that you've not gone far. Mm -hmm. So, in your journey, in your journey, how did you go about um, looking at systems and structures, reviewing them, being part of a team that looks at it and says, yes, this works, mm -hmm. institutionalizing them, mm -hmm that they work with or without you. In fact, without you, if it works better, mm -hmm. to the extent that they almost don't need you, then you're succeeding. Yes. So structures and systems are very important, super important. You cannot separate them from good governance and from transformation and accountability in any organization. Even in your personal life, you cannot separate those, uh, those two things. So one, you have to find a team. And there's a quote that says, when you have a strong team, it's game over. Mm -hmm. You know, you've already, you've already won the game. Yeah. Yes. Um, so ha find a strong team. And when you're looking for a very strong team and you don't know people, look for positive character traits. For example, if you're in an organization and there's someone who always comes early, 
that is a leader, whether they know it or not. Mm -hmm. So it's up to you as the, as the team leader to develop that person, encourage that person and uh, train them to be a leader because they have a trait that leaders portray, which is time management. If you have someone else in the organization who is always asking questions, that's a leader. So it's up to you again to keep on um, transforming this person into the leader you want uh, for themselves and for the organization. So build a strong team. Then look at your vision, uh, look at your goals, then ask yourself, what are the simplest structures and systems we can put in place so that we succeed? Um, what are your low-hanging fruits in terms of systems and structures? And uh, you know, simply outline them. Uh, we usually say also, politicize your ideas. Because if you don't politicize your ideas, they become hype. Mm -hmm. And you know, as the youth, we really, live, we, we really love hype. So let's have a habit of politicizing our ideas so that we know we had this idea, it was politicized, now everyone follows it as a regulation or as a, or as a policy. So that is how you go about uh, putting your systems and structures in place. Now, I read somewhere, I'm not sure to what extent you agree with me, mm -hmm. uh, someone said that um, if you're in a room mm -hmm. and you're the smartest person in the room, in the wrong room. You're in the wrong room. Yeah. So if you're a leader, must you be the smartest fellow? No. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Actually, you should strive to have even smarter people on your team. So your work is to keep on uh, developing them, encouraging them to, you know, really bring solutions for them to be of impact. You know, we are looking for solutions and results. I don't mind who is on my team, whether they have a PhD and I have a, I have a Form 4 uh, certificate. So whoever is on my team and they can give solutions and deliver results, then I'm okay with that. And they need to be a team players. You cannot be a leader alone and lead yourself with no, nobody else. Yes. Emotional intelligence is very key in, uh, in team playing. Especially in the age that we're in, you have to be emotionally intelligent, know when to say things, knowing how to listen, knowing how to talk, when to talk, why are you even talking. So team playing is, is very, very key. And actually, if your team notices that uh, you're not a team player, they will start dropping off. You know, they start, to, start, start being indifferent to you, to your style of leadership, and to your vision. But let's get real. I mean, all this thing you're saying is good, nice, and wonderful. <laughs> and you'd be the leader that I really want, <laughs> you know, uh, to have. And uh, I'm sure you are. Yes. Uh, but again, as a leader, you must be prepared to make some tough decisions, tough calls. Yes. And you'll not necessarily mm -hmm. always be popular in terms of the decisions, the actions. Did you experience any of that? Yes, um, definitely. You experience a lot of that. And especially one, being young, and two, being disruptive. You will always <laughs> experience um, people who are very, very indifferent. I can give uh, an example. There was a I was leading, I was leading a, a team, and then that team had a branch somewhere. So I asked, so when I became the, the full, the senior leader, mm -hmm. now I was doing analysis of everything. So I asked the, the, the person who was leading the branch along Waiyakiwe, why do we have two groups in this branch? Then he started telling me stories. You know, you know. <laughs> uh, what was Kizani, Saidingine, so they started... It must be nice to everybody. Eh, so they started another group. <laughs> so I told him, you have four days. Mm -hmm. We have four days mm -hmm. to finish one group. Yes. 
So yeah. you're very clear on yes. what needs to be done and the timeline. Yes. Uh -huh. I'm giving you four days yes. to finish one group. Mm. So right now, tell me which group is going. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and then they're telling me, oh, you cannot do that. Uh, this group has these senior people. You cannot do that. I, was, I, I, I told him, I will do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will actually do that. So I'm, I'm not telling you to give me an opinion. No. I'm telling you to let me know which group is going. Within this time. Within this time. Mm -hmm. So, and to cut the long story short, uh, on the fourth day, I sent a communication saying, uh, this is unacceptable. This group has to go. And uh, of course, people talked. Uh, people were up in arms. But now it's like, uh, this should never happen ever again in this organization. And we fixed that. And uh, I got a lot of uh, good feedback from people. And you know, most of the people are very silent. They were wondering who, who will come and mm -hmm. make changes here. Mm -hmm. So you will always have that, making very tough decisions. My, my, my personal policy, when I want to make tough decisions, I prepare for the consequences <laughs> psychologically. Mm -hmm. Like I know I want to do something in the next three days, uh, so I start preparing myself for the consequences. Matusi, <laughs> backstabbing, uh, division. Bodrum coup. Bodrum coup. Suddenly you're not, no longer a leader there. <laughs> you're a leader outside. Yes. Uh -huh. So when you prepare, when I prepare myself psychologically for the consequences, it's easier for me, one, to make the decision, and two, for me to deal with the consequences when they actually happen. You must have also encountered um, psychophants. Yes. And they exist everywhere, not just in the political space. Yes. How, how do you deal with them? And some of them come very close to you, and they're the gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. So they'll treat you like a mushroom. And you know mushrooms do well when they're feeding on, you know, less than palatable stuff and being mm -hmm. kept in the dark. Yes. So how do you deal with psychophants? So you, you let them know. And they can be academic psychophants, eh? With yes. PhDs, eh? Yes. Psychophants are not just... Uh, Actually, those, can, those, are, those are one of the most dangerous people to, to good governance. You know, one of the biggest obstacles to good governance are those people who are psychophants, people who think they are close to you so they, they can do anything. And we, we've seen very many examples in government, in corporate, in businesses, in institutions where because I'm close to the CEO, there are certain things I am not answerable to. Mm -hmm. So in my case, everyone, whether you are my brother or my friend or my BFF <laughs> or my boy, <laughs> or your boy Wang, uh -huh. <clears throat> when it comes to leadership, you are like everyone else. If we meet to watch Arsenal and Manu, you are my boy. You know, we can laugh and enjoy each other. But if you're in the same organization and this is the policy, then that has to be adhered to. So you have to be very careful. Actually, you should be more careful about psychophants, people who are closer to you than uh, people who are maybe rebelling or uh, being indifferent to you. Now, let's, let's contextualize that. Eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, the season we're in mm -hmm. is a political space that we're in. Yeah. Let's contextualize and be relevant to the season, yeah. the moment. What comment would you have mm -hmm. for psychophants in the political space, even from a youth perspective? Because there are those who will say, knew you, knew you, because it's about interest. Mm -hmm. And because I don't know nobody can say no to you, or be seen to be going against you, mm -hmm. then I create my own center of power mm -hmm. and achieve my objectives, which is not necessarily um, in sync with good governance. Mm -hmm. What's your comment? So my, my comment is uh, to, to the psychophants. Uh, I think you're, you're aiding bad governance because you know- But do they care? I mean, they're meeting the objectives. 
aren't you actually to speak more of the one who is quote-unquote psychophanted? I've just created a word here. Mm -hmm. The one who feels nice when the ego is massaged and they're being propelled. Mm -hmm. And I'm speaking to the season that we're in right now because it is apparent mm -hmm. across board. Speak to them. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, the person who has been, you know, the leader that people are forming around and uh, their ego is, you know, full and they have, uh, they have already have a strategy of, you know, if I get in, this is my guy for this because they have, you know, always, always been there. So I think my, my, my comment is that, uh, you know, we, if we can change that system, I know it's, it's very, it's very hard. I want you to say, not if we can, you must change. <laughs> yes, you, you told me you're bold. <laughs> <laughs> they, they need to change. Mm -hmm. They need to change um, having anyone and everyone around them. And you see, they are gathering uh, all sorts of people. You know, we, like we, we were termed as a bandit economy <laughs> because all the political leaders, the people they are gathering around, they're not good people. They're people who have very ill intention. Uh, one, for this, for our economy, for our government, they are only interested in their own interests. And then now when they get into power, nothing is, you know, being delivered. So I want to talk to leaders that uh, it's high time we gather around people who are constructive to this country, people who can help us to deliver our agenda, you know, as a nation, as, as the youth, as institutions. So, but I don't know how that can, can happen or will happen. So it's up to us now, the leaders who are very sober, to start gathering people who are very constructive around us. Now, you are clearly ambitious. Yes, very. And uh, you stop being a leader when you hit 35 in six years. <laughs> a youth. A youth. Yes. I, ne I, never, I never stop being a leader. Stop being a youth in six years time. Yes. But still a leader. Now, I want to look into the future mm -hmm. on that trajectory that you're on. Mm -hmm. And describe for me who you hope to be in 10 years time. Thank you. Who is that person in terms of responsibility mm -hmm. or what it is that you would be hoping, looking forward to, offering yourself. Mm -hmm. Let's talk to you in 10 years' time mm -hmm. and see what it is that you've done to get you there and what you'll be doing when you're there. So, um, I love that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, because uh, I want to... We are running Moranga Youth Assembly currently, and in the next five years, in 2027, I'll be on the ballot. To I'll test the waters. Not to test the world. It'll not be 10 years. You're talking, that's five years. Yes. I, I'm talking of that's part of getting the 10 year, <laughs> 10 year plan. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so that's my plan. Mm -hmm. So between now and five years, you know, just to push the government of Moranga County to deliver through the Moranga Youth Assembly. And then I will become, I will not try. Will become. I will become. These things you're not given, you think. <laughs> you go for it. Ayatubatishi. <laughs> Apana. Uh, uh -huh. So I will be the member of parliament for Mathioya constituency. So anyone else vying in 2027 mm -hmm. will be wasting their time. But you encourage them. Compe the is good because then. I mean, Compe is good, but it's good to, you know, to tell them. Hmm. Uh -huh. And then 2032, mm -hmm. I will be the third governor of Moranga County, and uh, generationally, and uh, trans 
tra and positively transform that county. So we want to put systems and structures so that even after, after my 10 years of governorship, that uh, no one else... You'll do two terms. I'll do two terms. <laughs> You'll not be impeached. I cannot. <laughs> Actually, the people of Moranga might say, why can't, we, why can't this guy do 15 years or 20 years? <laughs> but you'll transition. Yes, but we want to... The thing about good governance, it is generational. Uh, good leadership can be very limited. Like, uh, for example, in this country, most of us can agree that uh, Mwai Kibaki was a good leader you know, in, in relation to the other leaders we've had. But again, I mean, we accept generally, mm -hmm. but uh, does it not depend on the parameters they're using? Yes, but now um, you see a country like uh, Singapore. Uh, one of my role models is Lee Kuan Yew. Mm -hmm. Same. I, I really love that guy. I wish, I wish he was around for me to... Mm -hmm to meet him, mm -hmm. because I love what he did for Singapore. He was not, not only a good leader, but he set up systems and structures. He made sure that after him, no one else will sit on that seat and play with the lives of, of people. So that is what I want to do in Moranga County, that when I sit on that seat, when I leave, no one else will sit on that seat and play with the lives of the people of Moranga County. Usually, I'm telling people that Moranga County will be a model county for good governance, not just for counties in Kenya, but for African countries who want to benchmark on how good governance is run. So that is my, not just 10 years plan, but a generational plan. Now. For that to happen, when you have systems and structures, mm -hmm. we all must have adherence to the law. Yes. So do we have a deficiency in adherence to the law in Kenya right now? Yes. In which way, what areas? Let's speak truth to power. <laughs> <laughs> Lawlessness has become the order of the day in our country. I mean, it, it breaks my heart. You see, starting from matatus, starting from schools, going to how we are doing business, going to how the media is operating, uh, lawlessness has become very heartbreaking. You know, it's something that you think about and you almost cannot sleep. And uh, everyone is doing what they want, quote unquote, Everyone wants to behave the way they want. I know, I know a certain mm -hmm. MCA, so I can do whatever I want in this ward. I know the MP of this place. Mm -hmm. I was in Yambia Kitu. So adherence to the law has been very poor, thrown to the dogs. So, and for us to get back to the way of, uh, of good governance, we need very strong institutions. We need uh, very firm, a very firm justice system so that now we are able to, everyone has to adhere to the law from the president to the seven year old in, in the neighborhood. Everyone knows that uh, I need to adhere to, to a particular kind of law. I, I really love it when, uh, in the, in, the, in the West, uh, a CEO has a case of accountability and they, they just resign on themselves. I read a case of uh, an MP, I think in the UK, he was late for parliament for 17 minutes. The next minute he was resigning and saying, uh, this is not what my constituents deserve. I should not be getting late to, to parliament. Um, here we have we have MPs who, have never, who don't step into parliament for a few months and uh, they're not bothered by anything. 
You're lucky. I mean, you're, I mean, <laughs> there are some who are deputy governors who operated remotely, <laughs> virtually. <laughs> I saw, I saw, I saw a, I saw a political cartoon. Yes. Um, on the dailies. Yes. And it had, uh, I won't mention the the office. Yes. <laughs> yes. But it had the office, and then now the office office had it was full of cobwebs. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning that uh, this government official has never he never stepped in there, never used, never, he, never present, never present, mm -hmm. always, always campaigning or doing their own things. So, in that case, in your youthful life, mm -hmm. with the trajectory that you've taken, what are you doing about it? So we, what should be done, mm -hmm. what could be done. What are you doing about it? So for me, I am championing and facilitating good governance in every platform I am in. I do not condone bad governance, and I do not get in the way of, of good governance. And so I am encouraging youth uh, to participate in government, uh, participate in uh, civic action, you know, what can you do in your power to make sure that your community is engaged on uh, political affairs, socioeconomic affairs? So, for example, there are people doing kurayako, sautiako, and uh, they're just educating people on uh, what hate speech looks like, what fake advertising on social media looks like uh, in this political season. and. Uh, so you keep on uh, championing and facilitating good governance. I'll, uh, there's an example I'll give. Someone came to me and told me, Monene, I wish you were the chairman of our youth, youth group. Mm -hmm. And I asked him why. I love asking questions. So I asked him why. So he told me we have two parallel youth groups in our church. There is a chairman we elected when we did the elections, and there's a chairman who is a cousin of the bishop. And then I got really mad, mm -hmm. so mad. And, uh, and then I told him, so what is happening? What, what are the consequences of, of that? And then he told me, now people are not meeting, the youth are not meeting. And if you are not meeting as a fellowship, it means they are finding other alternatives. Uh, which are not good alternatives. And that made me even more mad. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I, I, I told him, and I've been telling people, as a church, we cannot be, quote-unquote, praying for the nation, but we are standing in the way of good governance. We are the ones facilitating bad governance. So we'd rather not pray for the nation and go back and fix uh, the small aspect of good governance in our organizations, because that's where it all starts. The power of example. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you cannot, and this person who is a cousin of the bishop, they will one day become an MCA, mm -hmm. and they will again be entitled. Because, and, and that, is, that is the ripple effect we are having in the society. You know, someone was trained um, in bad governance. Someone was, someone who was founded on bad governance and now they are on the highest level and they don't know how to change or they don't know how to do good governance. So that is the challenge we are having and that is what I am doing. I am facilitating and championing good governance in every platform and every sphere I am finding myself in. I... I normally joke and say, Afadalu ni tukane, kuliko ni pati bad governance. <laughs> yes. Now, 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 now. There's a word you've mentioned there. Mm -hmm. I put it to you that, uh, and I'm being uh, general here, mm -hmm. the youth in Kenya have an entitlement mentality. Yes. So if you're doing an exam, agree, don't agree, or I'm confused. Which box will you tick and why? I'd say agree. 
uh, because we uh, think we think that things just happen, and we think that uh, because of our age, we we want to be taken care of, or we want things to come easily. Um, the government has already given us so many provisions, like the 30% tendering provision and so many other provisions. So we think because of that, we deserve even more. <laughs> but um, things don't happen. Things are made to happen. And it's up to us now as the youth to rise up and make things happen. One for ourselves, two for our communities, three for our organizations, four for our country. We have to rise up and say, uh, we are going for what we need, what we want to see. Uh, for example, uh, this is not a, an example for the, for, for the youth, the KEPSA. KEPSA, they are they're doing an amazing initiative they are calling all the presidential aspirants. They are meeting them separately uh, in like a, a conference setup, and they are giving them the economic manifesto. So KEPSA has defined their success. You know, they know, because they are the ones running businesses and industries, they know what success would look like to them. So they are meeting presidential aspirants and telling them, can you do this? This is what our success looks like. Can you do this? So they are, quote unquote, making things happen. So as the youth, how are we making thing, things happen for ourselves, for this nation? So we really need to step out of that entitlement uh, mentality, that comfort zone, and really go for what we we need to see. And when we, when we package ourselves as, as the youth, when we have a framework, we will definitely have a voice. And all these people will sit down and listen to us. You know, we will push for even bigger and more provisions in, across all levels. Yes. Now, let's look at the governance structure mm -hmm. in Kenya. Mm -hmm. You've got the presidential, mm -hmm. you have the governor, mm -hmm. You've got, uh, of course, the, in terms of elected seats, you have the members of parliament. Yes. You have the uh, senators, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But within the county governments, mm -hmm. you have now Gov the... Governor. The governor, deputy, of course, in terms of office. Yes. But we have also mm -hmm. the uh, MCAs. Yes. Asking for a friend. <laughs> you can be focusing a lot on presidential, presidential, president. Good reason. Mm -hmm. But if you also don't engage, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. at the MCA, because the MCA is the one who is most connected with you where you are at. Yes. And you can access them. Mm -hmm. You can engage them. Mm -hmm. You have a pothole. Nihao, mm -hmm. you have insecurity, it is them. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who then influence mm -hmm. or have a voice at the county assembly, mm -hmm. where the governor, they can hold, push, engage to deliver. Mm -hmm. So asking for a friend, mm -hmm. can you devolve at CAPSA in engagement so that you cascade to the MCA? The MCA, where the word is, where your business is. Mm -hmm. Your business is not at State House. Yes. It could be, mm -hmm. but how many businesses can be there? Mm -hmm. Comment. Yes, I think that is, uh, you know, even apart from the MCA, they even went further to do Nyumbakumi. Uh, but now the MCA is very integral. Because policy, engagement, you can access, you can yes. hold them to account, you mm -hmm. create awareness, you have the rapport. Mm -hmm. And, the, and the, 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 there's a very popular term, called ground. Between the different. <laughs> <laughs> the ground between the different. Now, uh, people who are on the oh, you ground. Meet in boardrooms. You know something. <laughs> I'm talking to you, Bona. Your guys who are masuti too. I'm teme ko matope. Now, you know, people who are people who are on the ground mm. are the MCAs. Mm -hmm. uh, people who 
feel and understand what really the people are are going through what they want so that is a very interesting perspective to to bring where we can uh, find a way to uh, involve the mcas people who are in touch with the people people who can actually mention their their members because i'm coming elected. from is eh? mm -hmm. if you engage even with the mcas i'm not and i've not been sent by any mca mm -hmm. so the friend who's, who sent me is not an mca mm -hmm. is uh, when they feel recognized mm -hmm. They will reciprocate. Yes. And you get things going. You're a team builder. Mm -hmm. Then you work with them. Yes, definitely. People want to partner mm -hmm. with the government. People want to partner with uh, whatever is going on for this country because we really understand what we need. And most of us have the solutions. And most of us are really driven to deliver the results that we will need for this nation. So I'd say that is a perspective that uh, not just KEPSA, but people like uh, KNCCI, Kenya Association of Manufacturers, you know, all the institutions, you know, Evangelical mm -hmm. Association of Kenya, all these institutions can look into and say, um, for us, we can reach the presidential... Including mm -hmm. in churches, I mean, we're in a faith-based channel. Yes. You've got the constituency yeah. out there. Yes. Very big constituency. So the encouragement would be, even to the churches, to all... And many churches also have youth... Groups. Groups. Yeah. Creating that civic awareness and yeah. encouraging them mm -hmm. to step out, get out of the mm -hmm. comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Nobody will give them. They go for it. Yes. <laughs> and this cuts across board, not necessarily pushing an agenda for any one side. Yes. yes. Yeah. And actually, we should be, I, I want to urge the youth and everyone, anyone watching, that it's high time we become champions or elect champions of uh, good governance in churches, in organizations, in wards. You know, find someone who is very passionate about good governance. Someone who will push uh, the authority in that space to deliver. If it's a church, have someone. They might not necessarily be the leader, but have someone who is asking the tough questions, the bold questions. Um, you know, why is this not happening? You know, why, where is the money going? Why are the people behaving like this? So if you're watching and you're, you'd want to be a champion for good governance um, in your area, whatever area, the marketplace, politics, church, you know, uh, you can always, um, you know, step up and uh, reach out. We can start having these conversations and uh, make sure that this country is moving forward. Now, mm -hmm. to make things happen, you need to be where things are happening. Yes. To make a difference in terms of the political space we're in, mm -hmm. the youth must step up. At least you've given us your roadmap. Mm -hmm. So we'll hold you to account to that extent. <laughs> and I look forward to seeing you in five years. I shall be visiting you. Remember me, eh? I will. Those gatekeepers. <laughs> I will send you a WhatsApp. In fact, well, let's take a selfie so that I can, I can show them we are together. <laughs> we're together with uh -huh. <laughs> Now. Why didn't the youth register? Mm -hmm. The shortfall that IEBC had in the mass registration, registration on an enhanced registration. Because even now, I stand corrected, mm -hmm. registration is still ongoing. Mm -hmm. But uh, to what extent are we creating the awareness that you can still continue registering? Mm -hmm. You may have missed that window of enhanced voter registration. So to what extent are you encouraging or creating awareness that youth step up, register to vote? Because if you are disillusioned to the extent that you are saying you will not participate, nothing will change. Mm -hmm. You actually have made a decision mm -hmm. to accept whatever that will come. Mm -hmm. If it's not what you want, it's what you chose. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. because you didn't participate, mm -hmm. either by getting your vote to count mm -hmm. or stepping up to be considered mm -hmm. for elective position. Why didn't the youth register? That shortfall of at least four million, I dare suggest, the youth are majority in this country. Yes. So the majority of that four million, mm -hmm. the little research that I've done, sampling, mm -hmm. if the youth are 60%, 70% mm -hmm. of this country, mm -hmm. even that four million shortfall, 70% are the youth. Mm -hmm. So why didn't they register? So one, one we are very disappointed um, in ourselves first, and two, in the kind of leaders we have been choosing. And, uh, you know, because of the patterns, the behaviors we have seen. And then now we do not trust the system. Uh, allow me to boldly say that, yes, uh, yes. that uh, you know, qua ground, you know, what people are saying is that kazi yetu ni kupiga kura, lakini kuna watu wana chagua. Mm-hmm, uh-huh, uh-huh. So, yes. and that is a very um, worrying statement. That's interesting. Kazi yenu kupiga kura, lakini kuna wale wanachagua. Kuna wale wanachagua. So, your vote doesn't matter, doesn't count. Yes. Na tutamka saa kumi, na saa kumi, ya rasi saa kumi na moja. Tutamka saa kumi, as a family. Hakuna kulala. Hakuna kulala. You know, we wake up very early. Uh-huh. Uh, cast our votes, but... Uh, the other people who will decide who runs what mm -hmm. and where. Mm -hmm. So that is the, 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 the biggest thing is the mistrust with the system. You know, is our voice being heard? You know, does our vote really count? Mm -hmm. So if we can fix that, you know, if the institution that is uh, mandated to make sure that we have uh, free and fair elections, you know, if they... And verifiable. Verifiable. Nini zifunguliwe. Saba. Saba zifunguliwe. But you're the digital guy is better. So if we can have uh, that institution do their job very well and independently, then now we will be at a place to say we did our mandate to vote uh, to mobilize the youth to vote. And uh, we feel and we know that these were free and fair elections. So going forward, you know, we want to speak as the youth. We are demanding. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's not, uh, it's not a warrior thing. No, 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 no. There are no favors here. Yes. Uh -huh. We are demanding for, I mean, let me just mention them, IEBC. True to make sure that our elections are free and fair. Mm -hmm. Free and fair. Um, that no one who is not supposed to sit on any elected um, seat is sitting there because of a phone call. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and, and it's, it's sad because we are the ones paying their salaries. Mm -hmm. Yes, and they still want to determine our destiny. So there's a trust deficit. Very big. So what are you doing about that trust deficit? You know, if we say, we wait, we hope, we think, we hope, we takua, we look, it won't happen. Mm -hmm. What are you doing about it to make it happen? So, so we are... How will the youth hold IBC to account? Let me just be straight with that question. <laughs> Today, I think you, uh, as Munene uh, Gidira, uh -huh. what are you doing? One is just to make sure we are very loud with our voices um, in platforms, on social media, you know, with our families, making sure our voices are very loud. And these days, um, social media is very critical and very integral in um, making our voices heard. And then two, uh, making sure that uh, if we can be in these institutions, these organizations, uh, just to make sure that uh, we will have uh, free and fair elections. I mean, if we could be allowed, I mean, in the last elections, we, there, was, there were people who had parallel uh, telling centers. Telling centers. Mm. So if, if the youth, if the people who have the resources as the youth and the expertise, if we can also uh, 
you know, quote unquote, have our own tallying center and say, uh, just for accountability purposes, mm -hmm. and say, these are the numbers. We will run them as well. And then if, even if things don't change, we will make them public. We will do a website and publish them and say, this is what they published. This is what they announced. This is what we are seeing. This is what we are seeing. This is the discrepancy. Now let's let's reconcile yes. here. Yes. On that note, mm -hmm. I want to do two things. Yes. One, since I'm aware of your trajectory uh -huh. of who you will be in five years' time and in ten years' time, yes. I will have added a bit more gray hair, a bit more <laughs> beards. I want to take a selfie with you so that uh, when I take that photo <laughs> to the guy at the gate, at an ifungulia, nesema, wile governor. Uh -huh. That's my guy. Mm -hmm. Well, wow. you've had it from a young man, a youth who's stepping up to make a difference. He can't be alone. If you're a youth, can you step up? He's ready. He's showing the way. Thank you very much for stepping up. I encourage you to go on that trajectory. Mm -hmm. Hold yourself to account as you hold others to account and be the example that you want others to see. Thank you very much. Thank you. That has been the leader. Let's do this next week, same time. God bless.